What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of PS4 Jailbreak Tutorials. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the package files for games, apps and DLC and updates that you already have installed on your PS4. So you've installed a game and you want to get the package file for that installed game from your PS4 so that you can, you know, have it as a backup or reinstall it in case you get like a database corruption where you lose all your apps on the home screen, but they're still installed. You can you know, take them off your console and reinstall them to get them back. Uh, also, you know, if you just want to have them as a backup or if you want to reinstall them onto a different jailbroken PS4 so you don't have to re-download the games and apps again. Or, of course, if you want to make a modded update or something, you want to get the update uh, that you have installed off the PS4 so that you can modify it. Any of those reasons. And unfortunately, there was a great homebrew app that could do this really easily called the Easy Package Extractor, which unfortunately has not been updated to 9.00. Also, the PS4 Explorer app doesn't allow you to copy the package files, your installed package files to a USB either. So you have to do this with FTP. So I thought it was a good idea just to cover this because of the fact that some of these other homebrew apps are no longer working properly anymore. So even though we don't have the easy package extractor, it's still not too difficult to do this manually. Uh, once you figure it out, it's fairly straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and get into this right here. So firstly, what you want to do is, of course, go on the internet browser and load up your exploit page, whichever one you normally use. Of course, I'm still using caro218.ir, but you can use whatever exploit host you like to use. And then obviously run the gold hen payload. Make sure it's version 2.2.2 or higher. Uh, so don't use any of these lower versions. Use 2.2.2 or higher. Run the gold hen payload to jailbreak your PS4. Once you've done that, you can then close the internet browser, reopen it again, go back onto your exploit page a second time, and now load the Orbis toolbox because uh, we're going to want to have this as well. So we want the latest version of gold hen and Orbis toolbox running. So once that's loaded, we can then go back and go up to our settings menu, go on to gold hen settings and enable the FTP server and note down that IP address and port number that show up in the top left hand corner. So from there, we're then going to go to the Orbis toolbox settings and we're going to go down to Orbis toolbox settings and then show title ID labels. So this can show us all the different games and apps that we have installed and what their title IDs are. Uh, which is going to become very useful when we come to actually get the package files. So from here, we can then switch on over to our computer. And on the computer, you're going to want to open an FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP. I would suggest FileZilla because it tends to be faster with the transfer speeds. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open FileZilla and type in the IP address of your PS4 right here. And then enter the port number, which is 2121 and then click Quick Connect, which connects you to your PS4. So in the right hand box here, you have all of the folders on your PS4's hard drive. So the location for your PS4 apps, your main, your main apps and your games are in the user folder and then the app folder. And in here, of course, you get all the different title IDs for all the different games that you have installed. So that's why we ran the Orbis toolbox. So let's take a look here. I've got Black Ops 3 installed. And if I go to information, you can see I've got a piece of DLC installed for Black Ops 3 as well. So we'll go ahead and get Black Ops 3 plus the DLC. We'll get the package file for Black Ops 3 and the package file for the DLC for Black Ops 3. And I believe I have an update for maybe Resident Evil. Um, nope, maybe it's this Resident Evil. Yeah, there we go. So this version of Resident Evil is on version 1.06. So we'll extract the 1.06 game update for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard as well. That way I can show you where you can go to get the get a game package file, an update package file, and the DLC package files for any games or apps that you have installed. So, so what you want to do is get the title ID labels of the apps that you actually want the package files for. So in this case, Black Ops 3, 02624. And of course, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which is 03842. So I'm going to note down those title IDs. So if we switch over to the computer again, you can see we've got 02624 right here, which is the Black Ops 3 folder. If we go in there, we have the package file app.package. This is the main game package file for the game right there. So that's the one you would want to extract. For the DLC, if we go back to the user folder, 
if we go back to the user folder, there is the add content folder. So add C-O-N-T. If you go in that folder, this gives you all the DLC. So there again, we've got 02624, which is DLC for Black Ops 3. And in there, we've got Black Ops 3 Giant 00, which of course is the only DLC pack I have. And that is it right there, ac.package. That's our DLC package file for Black Ops 3. So that's where you find DLC in the add content folder. You find the actual games and main apps in the app folder. And any updates you will find in this patch folder down here. So again, we had uh, 03842, which was Resident Evil 7. So you can see we have a update for Resident Evil 7 in there as well. So if I try and just copy this over to the desktop right here to copy it to my computer, what you'll notice is I am on a wireless connection right now. And you can see the speed is not the best. We're talking 1.6 megabytes per second, which is actually really bad so as you can see there, the speeds are pretty pathetic over wireless. A lot of that could be the, the hard drive that I was copying the file to. It was quite a slow drive. But yeah, there's definitely an issue when you're copying over wireless. It's going to take a very long time to transfer really, really large files. So I would recommend that you set up a wired connection. I, I'm just going to go over that real quickly on how you do that or how I set that up because I always get comments on how I get such fast FTP speeds. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a quick rundown on how to do that. Firstly, what you want to do is make sure your console and your computer are close enough to connect an Ethernet cable between the two. So one end of the Ethernet cable goes into your computer, the other end into the PS4. Fairly straightforward. Then on your computer, you just go down to your network settings. You right click and go to open network and internet settings. And then from there, we go to change adapter options, which should open up the network connections tab. And then from here, you just select your wireless connection on your computer or whatever connection, whatever adapter or in network interface is being used to connect your computer to the, the network, to your internet. So from there, you just right click on it and go to properties, then go to sharing and then allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection. And if you do have a drop down menu like this, you just want to select your ethernet adapter as the adapter you want to share the connection with. If you don't have a drop down menu in here, don't worry about it. Just check the box and click OK and you'll be fine. So we click OK here and now it is shared. So we're sharing the internet connection the computer gets down the network cable to the PS4, which is connected to the computer's Ethernet adapter. So from there, all we have to do is switch back over to the PS4 real quick. And from here, we're just going to set up our internet connection. So we go to settings, network set up an internet connection using a LAN cable since we're connected to the computer with the ethernet cable. I'll just do a custom setup so that we can enter our manual DNS settings to block Sony servers uh, right there. And then we click next, automatic MTU, do not specify proxy. And that should be it. We should be connected as you can see right there. So, we, so our IP address has now changed. So it ends in 137.191. So now I'll switch back over. In fact, I'll probably have to turn off FTP in gold hen and re-enable it since my IP address changed just in case that may have caused an issue so we'll go ahead and do that so we're now running the FTP server once more so now if I switch back over to the computer one last time here we're going to go and open FileZilla again this time we'll enter our new IP address 137.191 and port number 2121 connect always allow insecure FTP. And there we go. So if we try the same thing again, we'll go to user, we'll go to the patch folder and we'll get that update 03842. And then we'll grab the patch file, copy it to our desktop and look at the speeds, 94 megabytes per second. That's mental. That's uh, yeah, that's crazy. That's almost like a gigabit per second right there. Uh, as you can see, look how fast that's going. So this is why I highly recommend setting things up this way. Now, to be clear, you might not get quite as high speeds that I'm getting because at this point, when you're connecting with the network cable, you're basically, you know, you're basically able to get one gigabit per second uh, of bandwidth. But the problem is that, of course, you're starting, the bottleneck becomes not your network anymore. The bottleneck starts to become the read and write speeds of the the hard drives of the drive that you're copying the files to and the drive that's sending the files from the PS4, that's, uh, 
that becomes your bottleneck. So for example, the, the normal hard drive in the PS4 is a 5,400 RPM laptop hard drive. It's not very fast. So you're probably going to get maybe 50 to 70 uh, megabytes per second if you're using the normal hard drive. I do have an SSD in my PS4 and it's a PS4 Pro. So, you know, because of that, I'm getting slightly faster speeds than I would get if I was using the normal hard drive. Um, so your speeds may not be quite as good as that, but it should still be much higher than it was on wireless. And there you go, that 3.5 gigabyte file copied over no problem. If I double click and open this package file in the PS4 package viewer software, you can see it is the fake package file. It is the game update right here. So it says it's a patch file for Resident Evil Biohazard. So that's where you go to get your, your update files. Uh, if we want to get our DLC for Black Ops 3, we'll just copy this file over. And as you can see, this copies over. This is 1.7 gigabytes. Again, we're doing 94.3 megabytes per second. And that's 1.7 gigabytes in only a few seconds right there. There we go, that's done. We can double click and open this. And as you can see, it is the giant bonus map for Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and it is an add-on. So that works no problem. And then finally, if we wanna get the actual game, I actually don't have enough room on my desktop to copy the entire game of Black Ops 3 over. So you know what, we'll use, we'll use a USB drive that I've got plugged into my computer, which is a USB 3.0 drive, so it should still be fast fast uh, read and write speeds so we'll copy the package file over here and yeah okay there you go we even hit 100 megabytes per second there for a brief second so this is a 43.5 gigabyte file and as you can see it's going to take what seven minutes i don't even think that's true it shouldn't be as long as seven minutes we're already about four percent done already i'll also uh, copy over these two files the game update for resident evil uh, 7 Biohazard and for and the uh, giant bonus map for Black Ops 3. I'll copy those back over to the USB. Okay, so the ETA wasn't exactly wrong. It was about five or six minutes there it took to copy that, but that was a 43.5 gigabyte file or 42.5 gigabyte file. Okay, so I've got all the package files now copied over to the USB drive. So we've got the Black Ops 3 game package file. If we double click it, you can see it showing up right here. So it is the game, the EU version. It's a fake package version. And of course we have the update for it, or sorry, the DLC for it, the additional content, uh, this bonus map. And we also have the update for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard version 1.06. So that is basically how you copy your games, your DLC and your update package files for apps that you already have installed on your PS4 and get the package files off your PS4 so that we can reinstall these now. So also again, I would recommend having the package viewer version 1.5 by Lman, which I'll link in the description so that you can open the package files and, and verify them. So once you've done that, we can now reinstall these because I put these on the root of a USB. So we can just, you know, just to show that these package files will work, we can reinstall these back onto the PS4. So we'll switch back over to the PS4. And now that we're back on the PS4, if we go ahead and delete Black Ops 3, And I'll go on to the patch installer and I'll use this to delete the update for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. There we go. So it's now back to version 1.00. And just to verify that, we'll check right here. So you can see Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is now back on version 1.00. So now we can go to settings, we can go down to our debug settings, game package installer, and we can install all three of these files right here. We'll start off with the game. This is Black Ops 3. Okay, so funny thing, that install actually took about the same amount of time as it took to copy the package file from FTP to the computer, showing that obviously the network speed was not any kind of bottleneck when doing that wired connection setup. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so we got that installed. That's uh, Black Ops 3. So let's install the a DLC pack for it, which is only like 1.7 gigabytes. So it only takes a few seconds here to install. And now we'll do the update for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. All right, there we go. So everything's now installed. If we switch back over here, you can see Black Ops 3 is reinstalled. 
And we have the DLC installed as well. Resident Evil 7 is on version 1.06 again. So yeah, this is just a handy thing to know how to do. It's a shame that PS4 Explorer doesn't allow you to do it. And you can't do it with, um, you know, the easy package extractor, which hasn't been updated because that is a lot easier. But, you know, it's still fairly straightforward to do. You can get your games, your updates, your DLC, any other apps that you have and get the package files from the PS4. Copy them to have a backup of them on your computer, to be able to reinstall them, to be able to install them to another PS4 instead of re-downloading them from the internet. And of course, also, if you ever get a database corruption, this can be very useful. Normally, you can fix the database with a, a Python script. I've got videos on how to do that already. And you can like back up your databases and restore them. So, you know, it's only kind of like a, a last resort method. If your database gets corrupted and you're not able to repair it, uh, and when that happens, basically, it looks like all the apps on your PS4 have been uninstalled, but they are still there. They're still installed. They're just not indexed by the database, so you can't see them on your PS4 or access them. So in that case, if you can't repair the database, you can always, you know, copy the package files from the PS4 to a USB on your computer and then reinstall them back onto the PS4 to get the, get the games and apps reinstalled. So yeah, anyway, it's a pretty useful thing. It's a shame that you know, PS4 Explorer doesn't allow you to do it. And it's a shame that the, you know, the easy package extractor hasn't been updated, but that is how you can do it manually uh, without requiring those uh, homebrew apps. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.